This is a video review for Transformers Fall of Cybertron Shockwave. And unfortunately, because this figure's plastic is so dark, I've had to adjust my lights, so my hand's going to be overblown in this. Now, Shockwave's, Shockwave's ship mode, I really like this because it looks like something that actually might exist. It doesn't look like a bullshit Cybertronian mode. Like, I like to pretend that when Shockwave was out gallivanting and seeding pl uh, planets with Energon, that he stumbled across an alien spaceship. It looked like this. That was a good alt mode, so he scanned it. I like to pretend that's what happened and why he has this alt mode, because this alt mode, it's so easy to imagine what this ship actually is. Like, up here is the bridge, uh, crew quarters, then here is um, sublight engineering, with this being the sublight engine. Then under here is the interstellar, um, not warp nacelle, but just the interstellar nacelle for the uh, fast drive. And <clears throat> the way I imagine it working is that this is actually the main gun of the ship. But it's also used for um, propulsion where, say, you it orients itself so that it is backwards to where it wants to go. Fires a cannon for the initial propulsion burst. And then as it gets closer to its target, it reorients itself, fires a cannon again for a deceleration burst, and then arrives. And then for actual combat, it just either lowers the intensity or changes the focus of the laser blast or just deals with getting shot back whenever it shoots its cannon, but it just aims and shoots. And I think it's a... I don't know if this is actually... What I'm talking about is actually a good design for an interstellar spaceship. I like to imagine it is because, yeah, I like my own personal fiction. Now, the actual transformation for this ship is actually quite nice. I like Shockwave's transformation. You take these wings and you fold them back. Then you take the sublight engines... Uh, declip them from this area, untab them, and bring them out to the side like this. And then here you see we have a uh, shockwave's lower body. We'll take the bridge, rotate it around, and there's a little tab here that will press a clip, a um, button in there, and then his head comes up. And then there are little slots in there and tabs here, so bring these up, and these will anchor down the head section here. Let me adjust my camera. And then bring the arms down. Oops. Bring the arms down. Fold the hands out. Fold the feet up. Split the legs. Yeah, that likes to fall off a lot. This is the... This is the cannon, and if you remove this, it turns into kind of like a Gatling gun. I think it's interesting, but I would have preferred a better sculpted cannon, because this actually ends up looking a little bit large on Shockwave. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to take these panels on his legs, bring them around and down, and tab them into the uh, side of his leg right there. There's a slot there and a tab there. It doesn't tab in very well, but it does its job decently. And here we have Shockwave in robot mode. And I really like the way this guy looks, although he is a bit small. His silhouette's really nice, and the... You can see his eyes glowing a bit, the light piping. It's decent. It's not as good as, say, on animated Shockwave's eye. And I really think if they had gotten the light piping on this just so I would have liked the figure a lot more, because... With how dark this figure is, it's actually kind of hard to see him unless you're in good light. So it all just sort of ends up being a blah of dark purple. So this figure really relies more on its silhouette, and it does have a nice silhouette. I like the way this guy's silhouette looks, but just the silhouette itself is boring. It needs something to add personality to it, which is why the bright glowing eye would have been such a nice addition to this. It's not bad light piping, but it's not as good as it could be like. It should be this bright with my lights over here. That's kind of like how animated Shockwave's eye works. So I'm a little bit disappointed in that, but eh, it's okay. Now as far as articulation goes, the arms go forward, back, in, out. It's uh, on a hinge here so the arm can go in and out like this below the shoulder. It's more of a transformation joint, but it can be useful for a couple things. Then the, it's uh, ball jointed at the elbow, so it has a full range there. 
that can rotate around 360 degrees, although it's not on a ball joint, which is a shame. Legs go forward, a lot, back, in, out, rotate above the knee, although depending on how much the knee is bent, it will uh, block itself because there's a little bit of wing detail here and then this right here. So there's a little bit of limitation there. And then you can bend the toes up and down, but because of how they're attached, they're just, they just clip on very easily. They're not very sturdy. Well, it's not that they lack, it's not that they'll break, it's that they're very kind of loose. They can't support the weight of the figure. Now that's the articulation of the figure. Now let's look at the gun. Now the gun he can either hold, which doesn't work very well because you have all this big stuff back here that bumps into the arm. But then you can also fold the hand in. And then there's a little tab here and a slot here. And then you get this, which looks pretty nice. I like how that integrates with the arm. Although I don't think it quite works well enough. It still kind of looks like Shockwave's holding the gun. And mostly that's just because there's no, on the other hand, there's no difference between the uh, color of the hand and the arm here. So it kind of looks like maybe the hand could still be holding on to this. So I like to do to alleviate that or to uh, make it so it's easier to tell that he has a gun arm, not a hand holding a gun, is I bring it up like this. And I think this works pretty well because it establishes, hey, this arm is just a gun, which is all it's supposed to be. You can do it on either arm. I like to do it on the right arm. I know that's not typical for Transformers fans, but I'm uh, Mr. Fanwank. Now, anyway... With this, you still get a basic range of mo motion. You you have access to all the joints anyway, so you're not going to lose any posability. And also, it makes it so that this arm is shorter. And because of the size of the cannon, the cannon is a bit disproportionate. It should be somewhat smaller, a bit more tasteful in size. And doing this does accomplish that a little bit. And, uh, yeah. So this is basically Shockwave. The biggest complaint I have about him is are his feet. Because you see, he doesn't have a flat instep. It is very, very far from being a flat instep. And because his toes don't really support his weight, that means that oftentimes, if you can get him to stand in a dynamic pose, he's still going to rock a lot. Like, you see this? And I have some ideas about how to fix this, although I'm not sure if they'll work. It depends on whether some of the plastic on this figure is susceptible to glue or not, because I kind of suspect the black plastic here may not accept glue very well, just by the feel of it. It's just a little bit of intuition I have. I have no idea if that's actually correct. But he can pose decently, but anything more dynamic than this, and he's going to fall over easily, especially because you either can use this flat section here as a heel, or this point here is a heel, and either way, to get those working as heels, you're going to have to put the actual back part of the foot, the part that's actually holding him up from the back side of the foot, uh, forward from his center of balance just a bit too much. Well, not necessarily forward, but too close to the center of balance to really work very well. He does have a bit of a backpack. So, what do I think of this guy? He's a pretty good figure. I like him. He's on the small side, but I'm, I'm okay with that. He's a cool figure. I certainly think he's better than Jazz, but I don't think he's better than Optimus Prime. Well, he, ha he has the best alt mode and the best transformation, but his robot mode is somewhat lacking. He has worse balance than Jazz, which is kind of a knock against it, and... I say he is pretty close to Prime, but Prime's robot mode is just too awesome and too posable for me to recommend this guy over Prime. So I do recommend this guy, but I would get Prime first unless you're just a diehard Shockwave fan. So yeah, I reviewed Transformers, Power Rangers, um, Marvel figures, well actually that's been a while since I've done this, uh, Brave figures, just a ton of stuff. If any of that sounds interesting, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.